One of the most pernicious lies of our era is the idea that if you just follow your heart, you can't go wrong. I did a search at Google Books for the sentence, your heart never lies, and discovered there are literally hundreds of books currently in print peddling that lie. And it is a diabolical lie. It is also a flat contradiction of what scripture teaches. Scripture says your heart lies all the time. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's pretty hard to think of any Bible verse that contradicts the spirit of this postmodern age more directly than that one. Postmodernists believe that truth is simply a matter of perspective. And so nothing is objectively true. And when a postmodernist speaks about truth, He's talking about something that he thinks is fluid. That kind of truth is different, you know, from one person to another because truth is simply a matter of perspective. In other words, the only way for a postmodernist to determine what is true is by listening to his own heart. But Jeremiah 17, 9 says that is not truth at all. It's a desperately wicked deceit. You cannot trust your own heart. It's deceitful and desperately sick. In fact, the prophet Jeremiah uses a word that means miserably feeble, but actually goes deeper than that English expression conveys. If you you want to get Calvinistic with it, it means we're totally depraved. And in fact, that's pretty much how the King James Version renders the verse. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And that expression, desperately wicked, translates a single Hebrew word that has several shades of meaning. The Amplified Bible tries to get the whole gamut of meanings into one statement. So here's how they render the first part of that verse. The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is exceedingly perverse and corrupt and severely mortally sick. And then they add an exclamation mark for emphasis. This is the doctrine of total depravity, and it's another reason God's word, rather than personal experience, should define what we believe. Actually, this is really just an amplification of what the text says. Our hearts are deceitful, and your heart is not mildly misleading. It is totally and thoroughly untrustworthy, perverse, and incurable. And not only will your own heart deceive you, don't forget that in this so-called evangelical district of the visible church, we are overloaded with charlatans and false prophets And listen to what Jeremiah says about them. Jeremiah 23, verse 26. How long shall there be lies in the hearts of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? And the point he's making there is that false prophets and teachers of bad doctrine are themselves self-deceived. They don't just tell lies to the people who hear them. They have first lied to themselves. They prophesy, the prophet says, the deceit of their own hearts. Most of them, I think, actually believe some of the lies that they are telling. And this is the danger of thinking that spiritual truth is best discovered by looking within yourself. That's actually the very worst way to deny the sufficiency of Scripture because it's full of an incurable kind of arrogance. And again, incurable is one of the meanings of the Hebrew word behind that expression, desperately sick. We cannot fix what's wrong with our own hearts. The Word of God has that power, but it isn't instantaneous or automatic. But this idea of an incurable sickness is an echo of another well-known and often quoted text from Jeremiah, Jeremiah 13, 23. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? And Jeremiah says, then also you can do good who are accustomed to do evil. What he's saying is you don't have the power to renew your own heart. The kind of heart renewal that all of us need, even as regenerate believers, what we need is what David prayed for after his sin with Bathsheba. Psalm 51, verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That is the work of God. It's not our own work. And only when a life is immersed in the word of God does that happen.